Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. So today's topic is Drex and its prescription in Dentistry. So this video is to help uh, the recent pass outs or the interns or the final years, those who are just started or recently started prescribing Drex and with, were having a lots of confusion regarding how to prescribe Drex on what dosage so all those things will be clear in this session so i'm going to explain you in scenario by scenario uh, first i'm going to give you a rough idea about the common chief complaints then the common drugs and finally the scenario how you so this is to uh, give a comprehensive idea about the drug prescription and 90 percentage of the problems you might encounter in your dental clinics or departments so this video explores the common dental scenarios where the drug prescription is mandatory so let's see what are the common scenarios or chief complaints where we need to prescribe drugs for the patient the first thing is pain that is the first and foremost chief complaint a patient comes to a dentist pain can be slight pain moderate pain severe pain throbbing pain so many varieties of pain are there and another type is pain uh, due to ulcer next uh, scenario is swelling and infection infection and swelling is uh, like uh, if swelling is there definitely infection will be there so that is another scenario with or without pus discharge so it can be uh, swelling and pus discharge without pain or it can be pain swelling and pus together so that is the second scenario next scenario is the post surgical uh, drug prescription that is uh, we have done a normal extraction normal uh, forceps extraction and we need to prescribe drugs to prevent any complications or any infection and the another scenario where we have uh, done a surgical extraction that is uh, an impacted canine uh, extraction by bone cutting or third molar impaction so where we need to prescribe more drugs than the normal then we may face uh, patients with TMJ problems uh, trismus or mouth opening difficulty or such problems that is a TMJ associated problems then we can also uh, encounter patients with leukoplakia, lichen planus or such autoimmune diseases and lastly uh, patients with halitosis or bleeding gums so this uh, comprises almost 90 percentage of the dental scenarios now i'm going to explain you about the drugs uh, we are supposed to use in most of the conditions so i'm going to give you the scenario wise prescription uh, in detail so first let me tell you about the drugs Com so commonly used uh, painkillers are paracetamol uh, diclofenac mephenamic acid and ibuprofen next thing is for infection that is most commonly used uh, amoxicillin or the combination amoxicillin and clavulinic acid in association with if there is an aerobic infection we need to use metronidazole so it all comes under antibiotics and also for infection control then we have a common drug which should be given along with antibiotics to prevent the side effect of antibiotics that is gastric irritation uh, is a side effect of most of the antibiotics so we need to give ranitidine along with these antibiotics then we have seratio peptidase group seratio peptidase uh, is another group of tricks then we have muscle relaxant that is uh, chloroxazone is another group of trick and uh, for ulcer pain uh, we can give a lignocaine or lidocaine uh, topical gel and uh, for autoimmune diseases we can give steroids 
uh, triamcinolone uh, we can uh, prescribe now let's start the first scenario patient comes to you with normal pain the pain is very uh, minimal but intermittent type uh, there is no much dynal variation there is no much postural variation so in such case you can give a simple paracetamol 500 mg mostly you need to give SOS that is whenever he needs you can take one but it should not cross uh, 3 to 4 ducks uh, per day so maximum he can uh, take it up uh, 6 hours daily that is maximum 4 ducks paracetamol you can give or uh, diclofenac that is uh, 50 mg you can give or mephenamic acid again 500 mg and ibuprofen is 400 mg so all these can be given just for uh, normal pain that is pain without a much uh, symptoms that could be due to a reversible pulpitis or any other problems if the pain is moderate moderate means uh, patient has a starting of reverse irreversible pulpitis uh, pain is a little bit uh, moderate not very dull or uh, throbbing type so in that case you can give a combination of paracetamol and diclofenac that is a combination uh, will be in range of uh, 500 mg paracetamol and 50 mg diclofenac so you'll get many combinations so that can be given in moderate uh, scenario pain scenario if the pain is very severe you can go for centrally acting tramadol that is combination of paracetamol and tramadol paracetamol 500 mg and tramadol 50 mg so mostly sometimes you can give uh, painkillers three days uh, three times a day but mostly i suggest uh, painkillers are just for pain if the patient is relieved of pain you can stop it not like antibiotics so mostly give SOS whenever he needs he can take one so that is related to pain so for slight pain uh, one drug can be given at a time paracetamol diclofenac ibuprofen or mephenamic acid you can just write the generic name no need of brand name brand name changes or varies from uh, place to place because uh, paracetamol uh, will be known with many other names uh, in one district it has got different name another district another name so I cannot uh, suggest a particular drug or tell a brand name uh, in a public uh, platform so you can you just write the generic name whenever you need no need to write the brand name so that is a pain scenario moderate pain you can uh, go for a combination of paracetamol and diclofenac again uh, SOS for severe pain paracetamol and tramadol combination the second scenario patient comes to you with swelling that is the infection is there pain infection but no pus sometimes pain won't be there if pain is not there you don't need to give painkillers but if uh, swelling is there if you uh, clinically diagnose uh, infection presence of infection you need to start amoxicillin so normally plain amox is fine but infection is uh, maybe two to three days uh, you need to give for uh, give amoxicillin and clavulinic acid combination that is uh, much more uh, comparatively effective in such cases so normally amox will be given plain amox will be given in post uh, extraction scenario that is in extraction uh, we give paracetamol three days then amox 500 mg three days uh, three times TID then we can give uh, the ranitidine uh, this amox uh, should be after food and this ranitidine that is to prevent gastric irritation should be uh, two times daily uh, as long as uh, you take this amoxicillin that is three days morning one uh, night one that is before food that is total six tablets so the uh, most important thing with the antibiotics unlike uh, the painkillers you need to prescribe and you need to uh, force the patient to take it on a full course not uh, stopping in between because the next time the patient 
will be having resistance to uh, that drug and it will not be effective in that patient. Now we will come back to this uh, swelling case. So where we need to give amoxicillin and clavulinic acid. Mostly it is like uh, moxiclav 625. Uh, we can give for 3 days or 5 days. TID that is thrice a day uh, depending upon the severity. And if there is pus discharge you need to prescribe metro nidazole that is 400 mg. Uh, mostly it is uh, thrice a day. Some people give uh, twice a day. So we can give 3 days or 4 days that is metro nidazole 400 mg. So that is a scenario of infection with pus or 2 to 3 days uh, prolonged infection because the uh, aerobic bacteria would have changed to anaerobic bacteria that is a causative organisms will be changing to the anaerobic one if the infection is in a chronic state so in anaerobic bacteria we need to give metronidazole for a acute infection for a new infection we can just prescribe um, the amoxicillin or moxiclav 625 it is a combination of clavulinic acid so in such cases we need to give paracetamol that is a painkiller three days uh, moxiclav 625 three days or five days and uh, our ranitidine uh, three days again twice a day then the metrogel or the metronidazole 400 mg three days that is a case in uh, infection now we have sometimes a scenario where patient underwent a surgical uh, extraction of impacted third molar in such cases we need to add a seratio peptidase uh, to reduce the bone swelling okay so if uh, seratio peptidase is not prescribed the bone swelling take more time to get reduced so in that case you need to add a seratio peptidase that is uh, 10 mg for three days uh, you can give uh, twice a day or thrice a day both are acceptable 10 mg seratio peptidase in case of surgical extraction to reduce the bone swelling that is uh, again uh, painkillers the moxicillin and um, mox or moxclav it depends upon the person to person and the severity of infection then the ranitidine then if uh, metronidazole or metronidazole sometimes not required can give no problem metronidazole and along with that seratio peptidase 10 mg for three days so that is the case where bone swelling is expected now we have uh, muscle relaxant muscle relaxant uh, where patient is having a tmj problem so muscle relaxant is to relax the muscles of mastication that is temporalis, masseter, medial and lateral pterygoid. So this is all are attached with the TMJ. So we are going to relax the muscle. So most commonly chlorhexazone 500 mg is given uh, maybe for one week. But the problem with uh, this muscle relaxant, it is uh, the side effect is drowsiness and uh, such uh, dizziness, drowsiness problems are there. So mostly it is given once a day that is at night so if patient with uh, this trismus or uh, limited jaw opening or mouth opening problem you can prescribe chlorhexazone uh, 7 in number that is once a day that is especially at night so that is muscle relaxant but mostly muscle relaxant comes along with a painkiller so there will be always a uh, paracetamol, mephenamic acid or diclofenac along with muscle relaxant. So you don't need to prescribe an additional painkiller. So you can just give uh, diclofenac MR. So always uh, MR will be there along with the brand name where the muscle relaxant is there. So only thing is you need to prescribe as a patient to take it at night because of this side effect. That is the next scenario and we have uh, ulcer so sometimes patient comes with ulcer so in that case uh, topical gels are available lignocaine and lidocaine gel so these gel are anesthetic gels and anti-inflammatory gels so it can be uh, applied so many other dendrogel many names are there colin salicylate so many other so you can just prescribe 
Tendrogel or anesthetic gel. So if you write a generic name also, the patient is able to get the same from the medicine. You don't need to write the brand name. So that is uh, regarding ulcer pain. Then uh, lastly, we have the uh, steroids, corticosteroids, that is triamcinolone, which is commonly used for the autoimmune uh, conditions such as uh, leukoplakia or lichen planus, where uh, 50 percentage uh, triamcinolone topical. Uh, can be applied and if it is a drug it can be given thrice a day for 15 days that is uh, regarding the autoimmune problem that is the steroids for the leukoplakia lichen planus problem now lastly uh, we have the halitosis or bleeding gums uh, issues in such cases we can prescribe chlorexidine chlorexidine uh, will be helpful for the halitosis and bleeding gum problems only the patient is undergoing a proper cleaning that is a scaling procedure otherwise it won't be much effective so so that is all about the common scenarios and the drug prescription so this is uh, basically aimed to help the recent pass outs or finally students where they are having a lots of confusion how to prescribe drugs and what are the dosages and what is the uh, sequence so only thing is to uh, identify or the diagnose the problem whether you are asked from your relatives or your friends or family so that's all about uh, drugs in dentistry the commonly used drugs in dentistry drugs in dentistry is a very very vast topic it's pharmacology pharmacokinetics side effects so i have not gone in detail i just want to give a uh, comprehensive idea about uh, the common uh, dental scenarios and the drug prescription so this is you need to identify the problem properly if the pain is there uh, the intensity of pain the nature of pain you need to understand and you can give a plain one a combination one or a tramadol combination and regarding the swelling uh, you need to know whether there is a pus and its duration acute or chronic nature and in surgical extraction case if it is a normal extraction of it is a a bone cutting extraction you might need to add a serratio peptidase along with that and for tmj you need to prescribe a muscle relaxant and regarding the ulcer pain so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more thank you